Hi, Grace Point. One of my favorite things about you is that you love to study scripture. It's like a congregation fault. So many of you, you don't just want carrots or broccoli. You don't just want brownies or cake. You want meat and potatoes. And I love that about you. You all love God's word and are enjoying a, a series that can go verse by verse through scripture, which is what we're doing this year. We're going to go, we're going to start at 1 verse 1 and then go all the way to the last verse in 1 Corinthians. We'll take all year to do it. And I just want to spend a minute as we get into this. I'm going to be preaching uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 through 9 uh, this Sunday. And that's an introduction. It's, it's just the introduction to the letter of uh, 1 Corinthians, and there's a lot going on there. And, and the question is that I want to answer is like, how do, how do you study an introduction to a letter? This was a letter written by the Apostle Paul to uh, the church in Corinth, and there were certain uh, conventions, uh, Greek uh, expectations when you would write a letter. Typically, when uh, when a Greek uh, writer would, would write a letter from, uh, from one person to another, they would, um, they would follow a pattern. The pattern would be that they would give thanks to the gods or to God um, for, uh, for those people. And, and then they would give certain reasons that they were thankful for those people. And that's how someone would uh, begin a letter. And so how, how do we go about uh, studying this thing? I believe there's a lot in here uh, that's worth uh, studying and digesting and 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 really considering every every word of God is is inspired by God and is profitable. It is useful, and so uh, as you know, I've I've given out a few different resources that I'm encouraging to utilize, and uh, and you can still pick some up. We got some left over uh, this week, but this is a a just the text of First Corinthians with some space for notes in here. And, and if you're able to pick this up, I'd say even before Sunday, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 through 9, read through it, pray about it, think about it, and jot down any notes uh, that come to you. The more that you do before the sermon, uh, the more that you're going to get out of the sermon. That's one resource I would recommend. The other one here is uh, this little... Um, it's like a devotional, 1 Corinthians, 40 days in 1 Corinthians, and it's just a few pages long, but our, our uh, day number one is on the chapter that I'm, uh, is on the passage that I'm going to be preaching on. It's called Being a Saint in a Sinful World, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 through 9. That's someone uh, giving some, uh, some, a little bit of teaching on what this is all about. He gives the big picture, he talks about digging in, and he talks about living it out. That's another good way uh, to, to prepare and to study. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention is a study Bible. Study Bibles are just really, really helpful tools. Uh, the reason I, I prefer uh, congregants to, to start with a study Bible rather than going right to a commentary or right to something like this is because although this, this can be good, a commentary can be good, that's someone else's thoughts about um, about a passage of scripture, a lot of the commentaries, they're asking different questions because they're talking to academics. Typically, the people in academia uh, very often are asking very different questions than uh, those of us normal people who um, aren't studying uh, for all our days. And so study Bibles are great because it's just the Bible and then it just has little study notes. It's not someone going on and on from their perspective, but just little notes to help you uh, kind of understand the passage. So a few study Bibles that I have that I would recommend. Uh, this one is the first study Bible I ever got. It's the ESV study Bible. Um, really, really helpful. Great notes in here. It's a little bit older um, than the other ones I'm going to show you, but the value of this one is that this is the this is the translation that we preach from because all of our Bibles in the sanctuary are ESV. And so that would be a really helpful one. It, these things are usually huge, and so uh, people can be very impressed when you walk around with something like this. You look very smart, so that's the other advantage of a study Bible. Um, you've got, uh, this one is actually much newer and just came out, the Apologetic Study Bible. This is the Christian Standard Bible. Uh, the CSB, which is, is what, what is Christian Standard Bible, that's probably my favorite translation. It just came out a few years ago. Really, really nice. Um, and they've got some really cool articles in there, like a one-page article here and there to explain some of uh, the scripture passages. 
Um, if you like the idea of like defending your faith, the Apologetic Study Bible is great. And then I've got this one with my name on it, so that's extra points. This is the NIV Study Bible. I, I find the NIV to be a, a little bit wooden at times, but the notes on this um, I prefer more than even the ESV uh, Study Bible. And so I really like the notes in the NIV. This one's a little bit newer as well. Uh, published about 10 years later than the ESV, and so the notes are wonderful, and I oftentimes use that. I'd recommend, if you don't have one, pick one up. Um, if it's going to be too much money, come talk to me. We've got some resources. I'd love to be able to get one for you. It's one of the best tools you can have um, as you study God's Word and as, as God is, is speaking to you. So those are just some resources, and, and, and just one tip for you uh, in terms of how, do, how should we study introductions. How should we study an introduction to a biblical letter? One of the best things that you can do is compare it, compare Paul's introduction in 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 9, to other introductions in other letters that he wrote. And, and what's really interesting is you say, okay, there's a pattern. Uh, typically these people thank the gods or they thank God for these people, and then they'll, they'll pick out certain things that they're thankful for. Okay, well, what you see Paul doing in every letter is he'll, he'll utilize that convention, but then he'll tweak it. Then he'll add some things to it. Then he'll, he'll switch it up a little bit, and, and that's where you see some of the distinctiveness, and that's where you get uh, um, a lot of stuff that, that you never really saw before. And so in 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 9, I'm not going to read it because we're going to go over it on Sunday, that's nine verses long. It's, it's a wonderful introduction. We're going to learn all about it. But it's very different than like uh, the introduction to the, to, to the Galatians in, in the book of uh, Gala uh, Galatians. His, his, Paul's uh, introduction in that book, in the book of Galatians, I'm noticing is only four verses long. It's a shorter introduction than, than the introduction in, in 1 Corinthians in Galatians 1. Paul, Paul says this, he says, Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. You'll notice there's some similarities between that and 1 Corinthians. And then he says, and all the brothers and sisters with me. That's different than 1 Corinthians. He only names one person in 1 Corinthians, not just all the brothers and sisters. And he says to the churches in Galatia, he says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's pretty cool. Paul loves to, to say that, and that would have been a twisting of conventions there. And then in verse 4, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. In that introduction, Paul gives no thanks whatsoever. And then he goes right in verse 6, and he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you. And so that's a very different introduction and it kind of sets you up for what's coming the introduction will give you hints for paul's mood for where paul is going he'll even kind of give foreshadowings of some of the content it's almost like a little summary before he gets into it and before he summarizes at the end if you look at the book of ephesians that introduction is huge it is actually it's the whole chapter the whole chapter one of ephesians is 23 verses and it operates as an introduction, as a thanksgiving. And this guy, Paul can't stop in the book of Ephesians. He is like, he just starts running. He's just preaching like crazy, talking about the spiritual blessings that we have in God. And he is just, he's in a different place. And so when you look at 1 Corinthians, that's very different than the, the introduction in, Gal in the Galatians or in Ephesians. Or if you go to Philippians, it's, it's a very different mood that you'll see in Philippians where um, Paul is just gushing in Philippians. And that's a little bit different than in Ephesians. And it's very different than, than the, the letter in uh, Galatians. So that's my encouragement to you is one of the ways, one of the best ways that you can study an introduction to the Bible is by comparing it to the other ones. All right. So if you get some time before Sunday, I encourage you just do that. Just look at some of the different letters of Paul. Just just compare, and, and you can even write notes. And um, you know, and what are the similarities? Why did he say that over here, and he and he didn't say that here? Why in in the book of First Corinthians? Why is he going in a completely different direction? Why is he saying that? 
that's going to get you into, as you look at some of the notes, as you do some of the reading, as we listen to the preaching, you're going to really begin to digest this thing, and it's going to, it's going to feel like you're starting to travel into their world, like you're, you're walking the streets of Corinth, you're walking the streets of the, of the first century as you kind of get into their world, because the introductions give you um, a scene from that world and what's coming and what's happening. So I uh, just thought I'd give you some of that. Hopefully that's helpful. Look forward to getting into God's Word with you on Sunday.